who is about to join and yeah let's let's listen let's listen and then we're gonna discuss welcome to another episode of chesskillertips.com with grandmaster alexandra kostyanyuk i want to show you today the game of anant van valley from monaco 2007 white plays and wins try to find the best continuation for white you can press pause now and think for as long as you need i'll be back at the end of the music I'm back. Anant won the game by playing a brilliant sacrifice, rook takes g7. Black has to take on g7 since after knight takes d5, he will get checkmated after rook h7. So Van Valley played, king takes g7. The game continued rook g1 check, king h8. Another very nice move by an ant, bishop h6 and here black is not able to defend from checkmate since after knight takes d5 it will be checkmate after bishop g7 if black plays after bishop h6 knight h5 there will be another checkmate combination after bishop takes f8 rook takes f8 rook j8 check rook takes g8 f takes g8 queen checkmate if black after bishop h6 plays rook g8, then white will play f takes g8, queen check, rook takes g8, queen takes g8 check, knight takes g8, bishop g7 checkmate. So the game continued after bishop h6, Anveli played knight g4, hoping that after rook takes g4, Rook takes f7, Anant will make a mistake by playing queen takes f7. Since here, after bishop g5 check, rook takes g5, he will lose the queen after queen, queen takes f7. But Anant was precise till the very end and played queen takes a8 check. And since white is a piece up, Van Valley resigned. <laughs> As the second world champion, Emmanuel Lasker, once said, the hardest game to win is a one game. So make sure to pay attention till the very end. This is the first game of the semi-final. I am playing white against Zhuchen. So the game started and I played e4, e6, d4, d5, this is a French defense, knight c3, bishop b4, and here I opted for a quite rare a3 variation, but this variation has a long history, it was first used at a high level in the world championship match between Alexandro Alekin and Max Erwe in 1935, after that the discussion was continued in games between Vasily Smyslov and Mikhail Botvinnik in their matches of 1954 and 1957. Many grandmasters have used it, including Fischer, but it was found a better continuation after bishop b4, which is um, e5, and a, a3 is now used more rarely. So we see that Zhu Chen played bishop takes c3, b takes c3, uh, d takes e4, queen g4, knight f6, queen takes g7, rook g8, queen h6, rook g6, uh, and I played uh, queen d2. Queen e3 is another continuation. If you'd like to see this game in full, as well as all five games I played at the Golden Blitz tournament, commented by me, you can order my new DVD for only $19.99. The original DVD with parts of most games, men and women sections, commented by Grandmaster Joel Lottier, is also available on www.chessqueen.com. Both DVDs are a great gift and a very useful training tool. Buy both DVDs and I will send you my new book, Play Like Kostinuk, autographed as a special gift. Thanks for watching the Chess Killer Tips podcast. 
Send your questions and comments to alexandra at kostinyuk.com. Okay, I hope that you're going to support this uh, Chess Killer Tips podcast. Uh, it was said there, How? Wh what are the ways to support it? But uh, <laughs> let's discuss whatever um, had been discussed in that episode. So let's try to get to the um, to the classroom. To the classroom. And um, so there was a very nice combination discussed in this uh, 13th episode that Vishwanathan Anand played against uh, uh, Luke Van Valley. Oh yeah, I have, I have these DVDs and these books at home, so I need to get rid of them. So I can, we can discuss a very good discount. Uh, but yeah, to tell you the truth, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway. So let's have a look quickly at the game. That's, um, that was, I believe, uh, the game from Monaco 2007. So that means it was played blindfolded. Yeah, it was played blindfolded. It was uh, not a classical chess game, but players played with shorter time control and blindfolded. And it was uh, the so-called uh, um, English attack, uh, the variation in the Sicilian Nijdorf, so Sicilian defense, Nijdorf variation, and English attack, that uh, where white plays e3, bishop e3, f3, and then starts attacking on the king side, while black is trying to attack on the queen side. Yeah, e5 or e6, there are like two main lines and options. c5 has been ha, has been played. It was played by Luke Van Valley in that in this game, and okay, we see. Um, short and long side castles and that means that this game will be quite sharp so yeah g4 white starts attacking on the king side b5 black starts attacking on the queen side and of course it's a long theoretical line i'm not sure how far um, ahead an ant or uh, van Veli knew uh, about this particular uh, variation in 2007 Nowadays, I think it's analyzed till like move 30th in uh, every single line. Uh, so knight a5, yeah, is a very nice possibility for white. Usually we say that the knight on the rim is dim, but in fact here it gets under control uh, the c4 square and this move becomes possible after knight b6, right? So knight b6 covers this diagonal and uh, white uses this fact and uh, places his knight to a4 in order to stop uh, black pieces coming to the c4 square. Queen c7, g5, knight f to d7. Okay, some white sacrifices the pawn as we see it. And bishop d3. And I believe that queen c7 is like a very serious mistake here. The only way, I mean, black had to stop. Uh, White's uh, intention to play g6, White's threat actually to play g6 by playing g6 himself. I mean, it looks quite dangerous and it does open um, a little bit the king side and weakens the black squares. But at the same time, you know, one should, in, in this particular situation, Black has to pick the lesser evil. And here, since g6 is so uh, unpleasant, Black has to stop it, had to stop it uh, himself by playing g6 first. Um, he played queen c7, Luke Van Valley played queen c7, and it turns out to be quite uh, a serious mistake because white plays g6. And um, even if black takes like this, bishop takes g6, let's see what's gonna happen. For example, after knight f6. After knight f6, I think bishop takes f7 is gonna happen. And then if the rook takes, the rook is hanging here. Um, so, so 
probably in the game black was hoping to play knight f6 and black was hoping that everything will be okay for him but in fact he missed a very nice tactic quite an unexpected one but at the same time when the pawn reaches the seventh rank and it's so close to the king uh, i mean there are motives that start to appear and Anand here, as we saw in the Chess Killer Tips podcast, played rook takes g7, a brilliant rook takes g7, using the fact that the queen cannot be really taken because of this checkmate. And actually, two years later, there was another game played in Cuba, uh, where black lost almost identically. In that game, black played rook a to c8, but rook d to g1 followed, and then black resigned. In the game between Anand and Van Valley, uh, black took on g7, but unfortunately for them it's not enough because the pawn is taking, take, I mean, is controlling the g8 square, bishop g7 is threatening, so, and if the knight, for, for example, goes to h5 then i believe rook, bishop takes a fate and rook g8 will follow so black tried to stop the attack by the g file by sacrificing the knight and taking the pawn of course uh queen takes f7 would be a serious mistake because of bishop g5 discovered attack but white took another rook and black resigned quite a catastrophe for uh, Luke Van Valley and uh, again again I think it was because of this mistake not exactly in the opening in the middle game rather but in this kind of lines in this kind of variation if you play the sharp variation you really need to be precise one mistake can be the decisive one and if we talk about uh, did i ever participate in blindfold tournament well i haven't had a chance to participate in the monaco tournament uh, but i did have a chance to play in the uh, sport d'accord mind games it was called in china i went there <laughs> almost every single year and uh, there were a few years i think two or three years where we played uh, blindfolded it was an interesting experience why not take the pawn with the rook i'm not sure where um so let's move on i've uh, picked a few more examples where white sacrificed the rook similarly on g7 and as I said, when the pawn, when the white pawn is on f7 and uh, the king, black king, is uh, close to the pawn and in, on the king's side, it means that something went, um, something wasn't really played, um, wasn't, <laughs> something went wrong, I mean, before that because uh, if the pawn is here and it's not been taken and it's supported um, by a white piece and the king is here i mean it just looks very bad and such tactical motives as rook takes g7 they just happen they just happen if your position is strong if your pieces are so well placed if your pawn is so far advanced that uh, actually you must look for such brutal decisions uh, because um, it's often the key to win rook takes g7 here it's just another example where this pawn together with uh, the open g file and together with all the pieces around the king just brings uh, this nice possibility to sacrifice and finish the game with a beautiful tactical firework which is quite easy to find um, bishop takes a fate just as simple as that and after bishop takes a fate rook g1 black just resigned 
because there is no really way to protect from uh, to protect the eight uh, both the squares that actually the pawn is uh, attacking because rook g8 is a threat and if uh, black plays bishop g7 then there is a checkmate by uh, queen e8 one more example one more example is also didn't go quite well for black we see that actually black also has quite an advanced pawn but it's nothing compared with this pawn and white is way ahead bishop h6 is possible here but in the game rook takes g7 was played and it's a strong move but again sometimes it's so easy to find such strong moves because your position is just um, such a good position mm -hmm. this one looks a little bit more unclear but then rook takes g7 happens anyway and we see that this queen is sitting on two chairs as we say and uh, if it takes on g7 then queen takes e2 will follow with an extra with two extra pawn two extra pawns and a better position after king takes g7 rook g1 and queen d3 followed by rook g8 wins the game that's how white won uh in this situation in this situation also you know how how do they manage the question the most important question i think how does white manage right to get this pawn to f7 usually it's the g pawn who makes a career it starts with g4 g5 g6 g takes f7 surprisingly it's possible look for example at this sicilian battle another sicilian uh not the najdor but the sheveningen some kind of sheveningen and but also um, opposite uh, side uh, castles g5 why well, decided to sacrifice the piece computer doesn't like this decision g6 but that was um, basically main white's idea and black had to take on g6 and instead they just let the pawn to f7 and the position became quite unpleasant for um, black because after knight takes f7 bishop d4 look at this beautiful bishops that just simply um, play such a huge role in this attack because if black plays g6 and queen h5 comes and that's what happens when all the pieces are just attacking um, the king and it's, it's a lost position so that's why black did not take the pawn they played king to h8 but then rook takes g7 very strong attack mm. uh, by white a very nice one king takes g7 rook g1 and unfortunately it looks like it might be possible right to cover it might be possible to cover from this attack but again it's um it's not necessary every move with a check uh, sometimes just the position is it's impossible to protect from several attacks bishop h6 rook takes g6 queen h6 yeah quite unpleasant black played knight to g4 but then e takes f5 that's how the game continued queen f3 and then bishop d4 is threatening so black tried to to protect this diagonal by bringing the knight to e5 and queen to h3 and again somehow black's pieces are just too far away or too badly placed there, there are so many pieces but they are not really protecting the king knight e5 queen h6 king h8 bishop d4 again those two beautiful bishops too many pins too many pins and this pawn of course play uh, plays a huge role in making this attack successful rook takes g6 is threatening uh, and actually there is no way to save uh, the game and rook takes f7 that's how the game continued but 
But even queen takes a7 is not possible because of queen f8 checkmate. Very nice attack by white. And uh, yeah, that it all started by g5, g6 uh, sacrifice. And somehow, I'm not sure what would have happened if black, if black would take on g6. Actually, I'm not sure... I'm not sure uh, about the evaluation of this position because it does look very unpleasant anyway. Of course, with the pawn on f7, <laughs> with the white pawn on f7, it's um, it's lost. But even without this pawn, even with the black pawn on f7, it just doesn't look. I mean, it might be possible to save this game, but it will be quite unpleasant. Okay, a few more examples of uh, rook takes g7 brutality, but again, those uh, such sacrifices are very easy to find if you have already managed somehow to uh, bring your pawn to f7. That's, that's the key to winning. It's not about rook takes g7, for example, here rook g3 and then rook g1 would win anyway. And rook takes g7, of course, is more... Uh, spectacular but it's not necessary it's beautiful to win in, in such a style yes i agree but uh, you can win without such uh, beauty it's nice to win uh, a game and win a beautiful prize at the same time right very beautiful uh, combination by white and very unusual checkmating that i don't really remember seeing one like this in my practice Black took on e8 in the game, but it doesn't help them because rook g8 is threatening, and after queen f7, queen h6, um, white is just winning by playing rook g7. Yeah, those pieces, they work beautifully together. And if queen f8, that's how the game continued, queen g6, and black resigned because, well, rook g8 will follow. Or even rook takes b7. Um, whatever you like. And the last, the last example. Also the g pawn somehow. I know it wasn't on the g pawn. It was an, the f pawn who reached uh, f7. Again, white sacrificed a piece for that. They sacrificed a piece. And somehow they managed to get the rook to the g-file, which was not very obvious. They just went via f5 to g5 and just destroyed the king's side. Yeah. And again, those beautiful bishops, the pawn, the beautiful bishops, the weakened king, everything works for white. And another very nice and beautiful attack. Yeah. Queen to e6. Everything seems to be possible when your pieces are placed uh, so strongly. And just, yeah, another pin. Okay, and that's how white won. And that's how white won. And actually, that's what I wanted uh, to share with you about Chess Killer Tips um, episode 13. That's one part of uh, my stream today. And another one, another part that uh, we can talk. And actually one, one 